Welcome, welcome everyone once again. Back to another Friday trip extreme. I am very, very happy to be joined by Mike Clark. How are you, sir? Good. How are you, Don? Good, good. Uh, I'm still away from home. I am, although it might not appear it. Uh, I'm working out of. A, He's uh, in a teddy bear as in a teddy bear room right now. Yeah, I'm working out of a family. <laughs> I'm working out of a relative's house. So forgive me if there's any internet issues. I hope you guys will just let me know in the chat. But uh, I'm very excited to be back this week. Uh, super excited to be hosting these Friday streams again. And Mike has a really cool uh, technique to teach us this week. This is one that um, I heard a lot about when I first started. And in three years, I have never managed to get it to work myself. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited uh, to learn more about it this week. I will say uh, you know, a big hello to everybody who's watching on the stream live. We're so glad you could join us. Uh, if you have any questions, I mean, we're here for you guys. I hope you'll drop them in the chat. Um, say hello, let us know where you're watching from, all that good stuff. Uh, I will not take up too much time here, though. I want to turn it over to Mike. Uh, I want to I want to learn about print merge and why, I mean, maybe just first and foremost, you could let us know like why print merge is important, what it's useful for. Yeah, I think probably what most people typically use print merge for is they're going to use it for taking an Excel spreadsheet from, from a customer, and, and then they're going to bring in that information in the spreadsheet uh, into the uh, into their engraving into Corel or and then send that job directly over to the laser machine. I, you know, I mean, I've been engraving for ever, <laughs> chisel <Couple> days. <laughs> um, and you know, when when we in in back in the in the in the eighties, you know, when we used to, you know, the the biggest issue was, you know, somebody would write out the names on a, on a well on a list on a piece of paper they would mm. fax it to you you know you'd be trying to decipher the the names and all that and you'd be trying to sort of type it in and you were spending more time typing the text in uh than you were the machine was actually you know running and so the nice thing about you know getting a text file from somebody where they actually type the text is that is that you remove that issue of having to uh is there a bit of a an echo left yeah, insert long lists of of names or other, yeah, yeah. So again, that, like there's there's nothing more likely to make a spelling mistake on I find than a long list of names that are all spelled differently and you know. Yeah, and and, and again, the, the the problem is is that um, you know, if you you would have to you know if you took that written list out, then what would end up happening is is that you would type it in, and then somebody else would have to check it to make sure there was no spelling errors. And then all of a sudden, then you would send the, the, say the awards out to the, to the, to the soccer field or the baseball or the hockey rink or whatever. And then the kids would get all their, their awards and then the name would be misspelled. And then, you know, the, the, the kid's not happy, you know, the convener's calling you up, freaking out at you and everything like that. And, and so ultimately, you know, that, <laughs> that, that happened just like, no, a, it just doesn't, I, I'm just on. talking from <laughs> yeah. listening to customers tell me their experiences. Yes, 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 of course. So. You know, and, and, you know, so again, that that's certainly one area. And, and again, that's the problem. And I mean, I've been in many, many situations where I see the, the text coming in over the fax machine um, or I'm actually, you know, in the in way in the old days, I was I was getting the, the pages and I was trying to, you know, type that in or put the put the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the tray of letters in there or whatever to, to, to do the, the text. So so again, the, the you know, getting a, a pre done uh you know, file where the names are done, you know, certainly, you know, cause creates that a lot quicker flow when you're actually going to be able to put that information into the job. And, and certainly, you know, if you're dealing, doing work with a company, you know, where maybe you're doing tags for them or you're doing part marking or something like that, if they're giving you all that information, then, then if there's any boo-boos, then it's their problem, not your problem, your problem. <laughs> right so again that's really where we come back and and, and again it's it, it's just it, it just creates gives that you know it just takes that one big issue out of the out of the, the equation when it came to doing tagging because a lot of times when you're working with text you know typing that text in is, is very difficult and if you're sitting there going like this one a b c which some people do you know, it can take a long time to do it. So again, if you're getting that information and then again, you're eliminating that, you know, that, that, uh, that dam that sort of, you know, creates itself, you know, the, mm -hmm. when you're, when you're doing it. So again, you know, that's really why the, the print merge function is, is so, you know, is so valuable to do. And, 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 
you know, the engra- the rotary engraving machines have had that functionality for forever. Right. And for so that reason, exactly. Probably for that reason. It, exactly. And, you know, they, you know, it's something that I, I just, I've always been around. So, you know, when I started working in Corel draw and they really didn't have that feature to me, it, 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 you know, it was, all, it was one reason why I, I, uh, I didn't like the program at first. It was great for doing logos, but that was about it. But now that it's got the print merge, it certainly makes things, uh, you know, a bit easier. It's certainly not perfect, but again, it can do it. So that's sort of why we 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 look at bringing that information in. And and I always tell people, I mean, you know, again, you can use it as a selling feature. You can say, you know what, you know, I'm going to do all your tags for you for your trophies or whatever. Uh, if you give me this uh, file formatted this way, you know, I'll do all the text for free. Yeah. You know, or, or whatever. I mean, you know, again, it's just, you know, people have used it as a selling feature over the years. And again, it, you know, it's certainly uh, uh, easy to do once you learn how to do it. So when you raise a good point there, too, of the time savings, I mean, the more time you can save as an engraver, the more potential jobs you can run, the more money you can make. Right. I mean, yeah. And ex- especially for for, you know, f- you know, again, you know, uh, you know, I, I always use the trophy examples because, you know, I've been in that, you know, I've been in that industry for so many years, but a lot of those orders come in all at once. Mm-hmm. Right. And these guys are doing, you know, 1,000, 2,500 awards and yeah. more. It could be 5,000, you know, and if you're doing, if you've got three or four different leagues, well, you know, you're pumping out a lot of product. And if you're having to type names and it's just, you know, or yeah. if you look at the school season or something like that, oh I mean, gosh, like yeah. if you have to type in a lot of names, you know, it becomes a real, a real, you know, crunch on the time because you're trying to do everything in a, in a relatively short amount of time and you're trying to get the machine you're know, trying to get your your parts out mm-hmm. and certainly the faster that you can get the engraving done you know the the faster you, you can get the jobs out because you know you've got to produce the plates you've got to put the awards together you've got to uh put the plates on the award you got to put them back in the packaging you got to get it to the customer so there's a lot of steps involved and and the you know the faster you can can do all those steps the the the, the better it is yeah so, so all right shall we uh should we take a look at at corel or how do you want yeah how do you yeah i guess what i guess the easiest thing to do is just, just to look at corel draw okay um and so we'll bring up corel here and everybody can see my screen i hope mm-hmm. so i'm going to do a new job I'm going to assume here that uh, I'm going to do something in, in job control and then I'm going to do something in Ruby. Uh, so again, we'll, hopefully we'll be able to sort of, you know, sort of work with both, both types of software so we can show you how to use it both That's ways. Good. Okay. So in this, let's assume that I'm going to do some, uh, some tags. Uh, they're going to be one by three. So that typically is the easiest thing. Uh, typically I'm doing an example. So I've gone into Corel Draw. I'm going to create a new document and I've created, I'm going to create a plate that's three by one. So three inches wide by one inch tall. Okay. So we've got a, we've got a drawing on here. Uh, it's one by three and, and basically that's going to be my plate. And then what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to, I'm going to sort of work off that plate when I create all my other plates that go along with it. Okay. Okay. So, First of all, what we're going to do is we're going, if you go into file and you come down here to print merge, and then we're going to create load merge field. Okay. Now, again, uh, this is, this, this is still relatively the same as it's been for years. They, again, they've changed the interface a little bit. So, you know, for, for when I, I hadn't sort of done this for a while. So when Lev asked me to do it, I kind of came back and went, holy smokes, they, they changed everything. So <laughs> anyways, but I mean, it's still the same functionality. So just that things look a little bit different than, than they used to. Sure. So, uh, but anyway, so uh, what we're going to do here is get a blank screen. Uh, we're going to add a column. Okay. And I'm going to add two columns uh, because there's really two types of data that you're going to be able to bring in um you know typically with 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 the uh with the print merge function so we're going to use a text field and i'll just i'm just going to call it name okay and you want an identifier name okay so and normally the identifier is is sort of you know what your so you can see what the data type is right so yeah for example if somebody you know gives you a name 
you know, and then maybe they have a position, you know, maybe the supervisors and, and the sales reps or whatever, those yeah. are positions. So that might be another, you know, another type of text field or something. So the names that you're putting up here need to be descriptive. Well, they don't have to be, but it's nice when they are descriptive. It's and a, then when you're it's at, a, it's a shortcut for you basically, right? So that when you look, you know, what's supposed to, like you say, what type of data is supposed to be there. Exactly. Okay. And what I'm going to just, just to step back a little bit, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to create the print merge natively with, with data from Corel. And then what we'll do is then we'll, we'll look at the bringing the data in from, from Excel or uh, okay. from an outside tech source. So we're going to go through this uh, as, as a, as an internal um, generation in, in, in Corel, and then we'll look at importing the, the text fields after or importing the, the text in after. So again, okay. we're gonna create the first um, data field and it's, gonna be, and it's gonna be a text field and it's, I'm gonna call it name and I'm gonna click add. So again, you can see here, I've got, I've got the name in, uh, in here. And then I'm gonna add another column and then I'm gonna make it numeric. Okay, now the numeric is, is basically key for numbers and then we've got, we've got formats here so you can put padding in here if you want. So again, if you want it to be you know, zero one, zero two, zero three, then I can come down here. You know, if it's zero, zero one, zero, zero two, you can, you can do that. If it's, you know, 1.0, you know, you can do something like that too, if you want. Um, I'm going to work with the starting value of one. Now, if the customer said to you, I, I want 50 plates done, then you could uncheck this and then having an, en an ending field of 50. Uh, oh, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to have it so that every time I create a, you'll see when I create another, another a name, it'll just automatically increment that, that value uh, as one. Okay. Or let's, let's say I decide to do 100. Maybe that'll be a bit easier uh, just so people can understand sort of what I'm, I'm kind of doing here. So really again, quick, we're, uh, really quick question for you, Mike, if you don't mind, before you get too far, just yep. uh, from Doug at HBA, he's asking, what if the name is too long for the space? Is there a way? Uh, well, to use the we'll, we'll get into that. We'll get into that after the fact. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll bring up something Perfect. that's going to be really long and then you'll, you'll get an idea as to, as to how to fix that, that sort of thing. So, gotcha. Okay. Uh, so again, I'm going to call it a number because again, it's a numeric field and I'll just use number so that, you know, it might be serial number or, or you know, you know, might be voltage, you know, or, or, uh, you know, or, or whatever the, the customer is, is mm -hmm. looking. But again, that you always want something that's identifiable so that, you know, if they give you, cause sometimes, you know, you could be doing a data tag and there might be 10 different fields there. Sure. Um, I did, I did one where the guy had, I think he had a hundred fields. Oh my God. Uh, and so again, you know, we, we needed something that, you know, so we can take a look at it and make sure that when it came in, it was properly formatted and, and everything like that. So again, yeah. that number up there for name should be something relatively descriptive. Okay. And then I'm going to say add. So now I've got two columns here and name and number. And again, if you want, you can come back and can, you can edit the column. If again, if you want to change something on it, like the name or something, you can come back and, and make some changes there if you want. Now, when you want to enter data, and you can do it here, and and sometimes this is, you, you know, you, if you see people, they're doing a multiple, they might duplicate the name all the way across, and then they're double clicking on the name, changing the name, and and uh, and go to the next one. Sometimes this is a bit easier to do, um, especially for text input. So to add a record, I'm just going to click on the plus symbol. Uh, you can notice here that I'm auto numbering. So the number is, uh, the first one is going to be 100, which I told that I wanted it to be 100. So all I'm going to do is just click in, in here into this blue field here. Again, it's a little, I, I, I'm, not ha I'm not happy with this interface. I like the old interface, but it is what it is. Uh, anyways, I'm just going to type a name in here. So I'm going to type in Mike, and then I'm going to go down here. I've never figured out a hotkey to generate a, a a next one. I think you, it just seems to be you got to come back here and click on the on the, on another one here, and then and then basically double click here, and we'll put in uh, we'll put in Lev, and then let's put in uh, another one here, and let's double click here, and let's call it uh, Dawn, and then let's do another one, and let's call her. Come on. There we go. Let's call it uh, Sally. Let's 
do another one here. Let's do what Doug asked to do. That sounds like the setup to a bad joke. I'm yes, glad exactly. Don and Sally walk into a yes, exactly. seminar, and <laughs> I, I'm just gonna I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a name in here, or something like this, because this is pretty standard now. I mean, you, you know, we get a, you know, certainly, you know, for 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 an English name, I mean, a lot of times it was relatively straightforward, you know, to, you know, you could, you know, maybe it was eight or nine, you know. Um, letters but sometimes people's names can now be 17 or 18 letters long well, so again, and even if they be... want like first name and last i mean like my first and last name together comes out to something it's over like 20 letters i think it's something stupid it gets huge yeah and then i'll go through that when i bring it in and and the, and the, and the thing to remember if I, i'll just go back to putting the names in by themselves uh, you know because the one th the, the, the you know the one thing i'd always say to people is that you know when you when you're inputting names um you know my sister is named Tina and she wants to spell her name T-I-I-N-A, right? So again, when you're manually typing this stuff in, you got to be really, really careful. Because, really careful. You know, because people aren't, aren't, you know, like I said, people have, you know, I mean, look at Catherine, you know, I mean, it could be spelled five different ways. So, you know, you can't just assume it's not like, uh, you know, if, if you're, if you spell Toronto, it's Toronto. I mean, it's not spelled six different ways, but you can get a name that can be spelled a lot of different ways. So you can never you know, assume. Yeah, exactly. As we know what happens. Uh, so well, again, I'm going to make something here, uh, Doug, for you that's longer so that you can see sort of what is going to go on. Okay. And, and then again, now, if you type all this information in, uh, the, 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 the rule of thumb I always told people because uh, lightning always stroke, strikes you when you don't do it. Uh, so you, it's always a good thing to save the data after you type, if you do manually type it in. Mm -hmm. So again, if you come down here to save data source, then what that allows us to do now is to keep a backup copy of the, of the data source that you put in there. Uh, I normally just save it as a CSV file. Um, and I'm going to call this, uh, you know, backup of typing. So that way, if if I go to run this and then pray tell that both the lightning hits and turns the power off and I lose everything, I haven't lost all the text. At least I can come back quickly and then reload the text in through the import function. And then I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, about having to go back and retype 250 names or something like that <laughs> so and again like i said you know you can type it in here but it's this is really the archaic way to do it you yeah. know I, I mean as you'll see uh, when we go to the excel it's a lot better to type this information in 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 excel and then and then or or word or whatever and then bring it in that the way and then you're, yeah yeah and then you're, you're good to go that way but you can do it here and and uh you know back in the old days when people didn't you know, have Excel or whatever, and they only had WordPad or Notepad or whatever, you know, sometimes it was easier to do it here because the formatting sometimes is a bit of a pain in the butt. So anyway, so once we're, we, we sort of, let's assume this is our list that we're going to do the print merge on. So I'm going to do, I'm going to go finish and you get a floating Docker here that basically comes up and you can see I've got the two merge fields right here. Uh, and again, again, you can see if, if this had a said, uh, you know, uh, text one, text two or text three, we may not really necessarily have known what was supposed to go in there. So it's all right when we're doing two, two lines of input. But if I start sticking 20 or 30 lines or even five or eight lines, sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot easier because you don't want it to come up and say untitled or, or some generic name, because if it does, you know, you start moving things around and you don't know exactly what that field is sort of, you know, signifying. Well, and like you right? said, too, if you're doing 1,200 awards uh, after a while, you know what I mean? Like if you have even like name one, name two, name three, like you really have to. Well, you wouldn't see that. You would only see name. You would like if you're going to do a, a, an award, it might be three lines. So you might but you might see name and then you might see position and then you might see uh you know, the, the association name, and then it might be something like well, 19, 20, so 21 or whatever. Let me ask you a question then. If you were doing a thousand awards and, and you know, 400 were going to be for 
uh, you know, an organization and it was going to be, you know, name position. And then uh, the other 600 were going to be for uh, a hockey league and they were going to be, you know, name of player and their position on the team. Yeah. Would you do a separate print merge for each group or could you do it all as one thing? You could do it all as once, but I, I think, I think ultimately uh, you would probably do it as, as separate. You're jobs. safer to do it as. Yeah, yeah, you could do it. I mean, again, the, 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 the thing like you could have like um, you might have a scenario where you're doing a, a you know, maybe you're doing a soccer league. Mm -hmm. And uh, so maybe you might have, uh, you know, Toronto soccer league, and then you might have uh, the person's name uh, and then you might have uh, Pee Wee. Right? right. So again, you know, Pee Wee, then you would have a, a merge field that, that uh, said Pee Wee on it. Now, again, I'll show you where you can get a, around that if you want. So that really isn't a really a big d deal, but Sometimes if you're if you're bringing in multiple types of data and certain plates, you know, are taking one piece of data and another certain plates are taking different data, then it's sometimes better just to do it, the print merges as one job with just that data. Yeah. OK. And then and then go from there. OK. Um, so again, uh, so now what we need to do is we need to tell Corel um, you know, which merge fields we want to use. And what we do is we click on, we say insert merge field. So you notice I've name is selected. So I'm going to say insert merge. And again, you can see that this comes up and says name. Okay. So that's an identifier. So you know exactly now that the name is there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm going to insert the number. So I'm going to insert the number. And again, we've got the, 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 the fields that are inserted. So again, now, if I, if, 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 if I was just to go and, and finish the merge off, so again, let's, let's assume that I merged a new document here. Um, and the problem you can see here is that there's no, there's no condensing, there's no justification going on here mm -hmm. or anything like that. Some people might say, well, I want to use a different font and, and, you know, and I want the name to be bigger than the, than the number things like that. So again, we need to do that before we actually do the, the merge. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here. So there's a couple of things that you need to do before you generate the merge field. Now, normally what I've done in Corel is I, I normally make sure that my default uh, justification is always center. Uh, but uh, this one hasn't been set up that way. So again, the first thing you're going to do is select both of these lines here. Now, again, I'm going to assume that I want them center justified. You might have them so they're left or right justified or whatever. But again, normally when we're bringing text in, the number is not a, a, a is going is going to be not a too big of a deal. But again, everything needs to be center justified in the in the case of what I want to do here. So again, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make it center justified. This is very very critical. So again, because if you've got a name, if you don't have any justification, then you know, this one's four, you know, you, this is four letters. Well, if the next name is eight letters, well, the text is going to go running off from, from the end over to outside the, the page here. Right. I want the text to evenly space this way and that way as the names come in. Now, again, let's just make sure these are in the middle. So 1.5, and then let's make sure that this is in the middle. And that, oops, 1.5. Okay, so so again, I've I've got my text all set up and everything like that, uh, and then again, now let's assume that you want to uh, let's just say you want to bring a uh, a logo in. Okay, so um, actually, let's do it this way. I'll bring I'll do the logo after. Um, the other thing, let's assume that uh, we want to make the number smaller. Hold the shift key down here. I want to get that smaller. And uh, let's bring that up there. And then let's assume that we want, uh, let's put in here, let's make this a bit smaller. Let's make this 10. Let's make this 20, 21. Okay. And then that's 1.5. So again, the 2021 is going to be constant through every plate. Okay. So when you do a print merge, it's basically mirroring the plate and it's creating another duplicate uh and it merges the name and the number but the the logo or 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 the 2021 stays constant and it's going to be duplicated in every plate okay 
okay so um so again we can we can do that so again if i um you know and then maybe i want the name to be in a different font so i'm going to come in here and i'm going to use uh let's use um calibri light and and let's make the number something that we can see that it's being different and you can see now that uh I've sort of got my plate all set up as to what I want to do. Now, if I do my print merge to new document, so now you can see that what it's done is it's created five pages based on the five pages, about five names that I generated in the print merge. That's really cool. Okay. So now if I go to each page here, you can see I've gone to 101, 102, 103, and Let's assume I'm just let's assume that just for this goes back to the others. Let's assume that that's what happens there. Right. I'm just going to condense this down so that we can get it there. And that's the question that Doug had. And this is a pretty common problem. Now, there is you, you, I, I, you can actually put a condensing field in here. I'm not going to get into making an envelope and I do a condensing field so that the text condenses to the to the border. Um, but the the reason that we, we we merge to a new document like this is because this allows us now to go through the process of checking all the plates to make sure that all the names fit on the on the tag. Again, if this doesn't that this doesn't fit, then I'm just going to grab this handle, hold the shift key down, then I'm just going to do a manual condense on the on the text so that it fits within the page so i don't have to worry now again if, if you're if you're doing this uh, you know we go back to you know what you, you know what we talked about earlier is that you might say to the customer you know we're going to do a one by three plate and you're only allowed to have 12 12 letters per person right right because anything over 12 letters is now you're running into the problem where you might have to go start condensing plates and again you know once you have to start going in condensing plates manually then it starts to take more time so you might have a a set factor in there to say well you're only allowed x amount of you know characters per per uh, per plate so you know if somebody has 17 letters in a name then you might you know it might be something like uh, d mcconnell you know uh, yeah. you know or m clark or something like that where you know again you you might or mike c or or something like that where you're short forming it just so that so the names all you know they fit on the page and but again not. it's like if you can get this information from your customer then it's them who has to make the tough decision and not you right i mean well that's right it. exactly yeah exactly. and again you, you don't want to be calling the customer back and after the fact and, and well i mean not, not that you probably would but again you know, you, you, you want them to do all the work, you're right. You want them to make the decision as to what you're doing. Again, the thing is, is that you need to practice a little bit so that you give them the, the requirements for what they need to have done. Right. So, you know, again, you, I can get more characters on, on the second line and the third line than the first line, because the font is bigger right. on the first line than it is on the other two. So again, you know, it might be a bit of a trade-off. You might say, well, you know, if you want 17 characters per name, then the font height can only be this tall, right? So that all those characters fit within that string of text, right? So again, it, it just, it really depends on, on, you know, what you want to do and what the customer is looking for, right? So if he wants a really big, bold name with really large text, well, now he's starting to, to have issues where he might only be able to have you know, you'll be able to have smaller amount of characters on that line as opposed to a smaller font. Right. Okay. So again, all that you can see now that, that, that this plate, I'm on page five, it's exactly the same as page one, which is what we originally, remember we, our template had been changed to, right, is here. Yep. So you can see that Corel's created two jobs. Well, sorry, it's the original job I had and it's created a print merge job. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, again, just as a housekeeping uh, uh, um, point, again, we always assume uh, that Microsoft is going to do something silly and do an auto update. And then we may lose our print merge field. So again, sometimes what I'll tell people to do is to save the print merge because the last thing you want to do is, is um, you know, the customer starts complaining about this this plate 
you know, on this, this plate. So you can go back and look for it and you've got the original file here so you can check it. And again, if you have to rerun it or something like that, then, then you can rerun it. Um, and, and again, so it's always good to have that, uh, basic, uh, information there, um, so that you can then, you know, either import the text in, or again, you have the, the file right here. So again, sometimes these are good things to, to save. And then if you decide to get rid of them later on, then, then you can. Okay. Now let's assume that, um, let's assume that these are going to go on a metal plate. Okay. So, uh, I've got a, a metal plate here, something like a cut anodized. Now it's not one by three, but it's a, it's a metal plate. Um, so again, um, what you can do now is, is I'm not going to cut these out, uh, for this example, I'm just going to send it over and then we'll come back and we'll cut something out. Um, so these ones, I'm going to bring these into job control and because these plates are all the same size, then what I can do is I can actually stick them all together on the plate like this. Okay. And, uh, what we'll do is we'll be able to get, uh, I'm going to go on the laser here. And what I'm talking about here is just putting the plates in like this. Okay. There's no repeatable error here because the plate is, they're all exactly the same size. Yeah. You're just tiling them in. Essentially. I'm tiling them in and everything. So as long as my zero, zero position is good, I get no repeatable error. And then basically I don't want to cut these. I just want to engrave them. Mm -hmm. Right. So all I really need to do now is, is I'm going to go file print. And if you're working in job control, then you're going to come in here and then you're basically going to put in your page size of one by three, as I've done here. Uh, you maybe, you know, you're going to adjust your power and speed, whatever you need to do. You're going to say, okay. And then basically you're going to go file print. Okay. Now, if I go into job control, you'll notice that I have five files that got created print merge one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, two, zero, zero, three. So now I've got five plates. So I'm going to go shift. I'm going to select those five plates. I'm going to drag them out and they're basically going to go right on the, on the page here in the order that they were created. Very cool. Okay. So again, you know, they just lined up. And then again, if I had brought in 40 of them, they would have just gone right across and then started another row and gone right across and then started another row and then gone straight across. And then basically then I can just run the job. Okay. So again, that, that's a fairly easy process. If you want to, um, if you want to, uh, you know, just do some engraving and again, you know, sometimes what, what customers will do, what, you know, what I'll do with customers is that if that's sort of the process, you could even do a print merge out of Excel with the same basic results. Right. So learning to do the print merge in print in Corel is, you know, it's the same as in Excel. I mean, you just generate a page size that's one by three and then you do print merge and then you just, you know, you set your data properly in, in Excel and then you create a print merge and it, it's the same sort of process. Okay. So now if you were going to send that over to Ruby, mm -hmm. um, then what we would need to do, we'd have to go an extra step here. Um, and we're going to go over here. And so really quick, sorry, stepping back. If you were going to link that print merge to an Excel database, um, you can't it just, link it to an Excel database or not. Pardon me, not an Excel database, but an Excel uh, spreadsheet. Yeah. Um, so as you were just explaining there, it would just be a matter of um, essentially just setting up the original print merge slightly differently in the in the Corel presets there. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you're talking about the way the like Mike is first and 100 is second. And is that sort of what you're asking me? Or Yeah, even just like importing the importing the data as opposed to typing it directly into. Uh, into yeah. Corel. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you, if you go back into the into the into the merge field, right? Like if you come back, you know, and you're in that if you if you go in here and you edit the 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 text, right? Like you can mm -hmm. see that that um again, you know, Mike is first, Lev is second, Don, Sally. Now, yeah. this one showed up second because what you have to appreciate is that 
you saw in the in the ordering of of the way it was set up in there was that was that um print one was like uh or print merge one was like four down or whatever right mm -hmm. so again you may have a little bit of mixing depending on the way the numbers are formatted when you drag them over like you could move them around if you want but but a lot of times it's it's easier just to you know to to do it that way i think if that's what you're asking me here I could I could put name here and number here like how you know if I wanted to put number first then even yeah, well, though it shows up twice there's here in the bottom it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to show up you know yeah you know second in, in the order on the actual second design. in the order whatever right so again gotcha. it, it it really just depends you know uh, on the way that it's created now if you're gonna if you're gonna send this say to say to well you can send this to to job control a, a different way, or we can send it to Ruby. But let's assume that we're going to send this to Ruby. Now, again, what you're going to do here is then you're going to go file uh, print. Uh, sorry, I got to get into my print merge one here. Sorry. So I'm going to go file print. And you're going to need to create a multiple. Now, um, you're going to do that with the imposition command and you're going to go into layout in the tab here for Corel draw. Mm -hmm. uh, notice here again that that my print preview again, you can show that by clicking on this little icon here again. If we go back in here just again, I'm, I'm at one by three, but let's assume that I, I, I don't want to dump five. I don't want to dump 400 names or let's say I don't want to dump 96. By doing one by threes on a 12 by 24, that's 96 plates. Yeah. But I don't want to dump 96 plates and, and start importing all those into, into Ruby. Ruby. It's, it's a pain in the butt. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use the imposition command. And I'm basically going to come in into the layout tab. And I'm going to go to edit. And what that does is that gives me, oh, sorry. I faux pas on my part. Sorry, go to general, uh, go to Trotec. Um, this value here has to be the page size. Sorry about that. So I'm going to do this on a on a, a six by six inch piece of material. Okay. So what that does is basically that six by six. So what that's going to do now is I've actually got a master plate six by six, and I'm going to put a whole bunch of one by threes on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'm going to do the layout through the imposition command to edit. And what you see here now is the one plate on a six by six inch page. Now that gotcha. could be 12 by 24. It could be eight and a half by 11, you know, however you're, you're, you're processing it. Okay. Now, if you click on this, I, the document preview, you see that the first plate is there. Oh, now cool. that plate is dictated by this value right here. So if I, if I hit the up arrow, I create two. Now Mike and Lev will fit into there. Now the thing to remember here, which again, you know, I, I always laugh because people always say to me, how do you know so much? Because I screw up a lot. And I remember when I, the next thing I did was, wow, let's, let's go three. Well, you notice if you put three, what, is, what has just happened? <laughs> Everything has scaled itself down. Okay, so the page size now is the, the wrong size. So you got to do a little bit of figuring out here. You can, if you want, you can come in here and lock the, 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 the maintain the document size. So if I do generate another one, then things go off the plate. So at least you get a visual that you've done something wrong. But again, you know, don't try to put four plates on a master plate that's six by six and the plates are one by three because you can see it's going to scale everything down. If you've got a row, then again, you're just going to increase the rows. And now we're, we're down to five you know uh where we're going to do it now again sometimes what you might do is you might want to put that up in the top left hand corner so you can click on edit margins and again if you click this button here then that will go up to the top perfect okay so again um in the, in the case of ruby it really doesn't matter where it's going because ultimately we're we're just dealing with 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 these plates but if you were when you, we do the cutout you might want to work up at the top left hand corner and then and then go that route so again you may want to put it up at the top so again now what you're going to do is is we're done um you can save this you notice here if you come down here i've created one called mike um 
And that would, all those steps I just did, I can do automatically. Okay. You know, as long as they're, as long as the steps are all the same in terms of the numbers of plates, you know, and the size and everything like that. So if I click the OK button here, you can see here, if I go into the imposition layer, you can see Mike. So I wouldn't have, if, if, the, if I was doing a whole bunch of master plates the same size with the number, like say you were 12 by 24, 1 by 3, and I was doing 40 of them, well, I don't have to go through every time I do a new list by regenerating the imposition command. I can save and layout, and then all I need to do is then just click Mike, and all the information is automatically processed. So I didn't, I'd have to go back into imposition command and, and click those bunch of gotcha. uh, values that I wanted to do. Okay. Now, the problem that we have in, in Ruby is, is that uh, the Ruby needs to see a PDF file. Okay. So what you need to do here is you need to come back here and you'll notice that uh, Microsoft uh, has the Microsoft print to PDF. Mm -hmm. um, and what that allows me to do now is that I can go file print. And it asks me to save. So I can call it uh, multiple Oops. save, whatever. And then what I can do is then I can go into Ruby. which is here, and then I can go into my, I can come in here and import the job in, and there's my multiple save, and then I can take that, and then I can load that job in, and then everything has been laid out here. So again, all that, all that information has been laid out here, um, and then I could, you know, if I wanted to, I could put that up in the, you know, in the top left-hand corner, and, and then base, and then basically, um, you know, put that up there and then, and then, and then work with it that way. So again, you know, it just really depends on, on what you want to do. Um, and, and then basically just send the job over. So again, I brought in that information in in through that function. Now, again, we'll go through how to create a cut box and everything like that next so that, you know, you could have the cut line and everything here uh, for it. Okay. So get rid of that job. And go back to realm. Quick question here, Mike, uh, if you don't mind, from Kristen in the chat. Yeah. Um, she was asking, let's say you have a list of 100 names, but you can only fit, let's say, 96 on your master sheet at one time. Yep. Um, do you have the ability to control what field it starts and stops at? So if you wanted it to start at name number four and go to name 100 or name 96 to 100 or, or whatever, right? If you only had four left that you wanted to do, that kind of thing. Uh, can you make that happen or does it automatically have to start at like you know, field one of the print merge, essentially. Well, if you're, if you're importing the, the, the file, for, like if you're, if you're importing an Excel spreadsheet, right? Let's mm -hmm. assume that. So this is the Excel spreadsheet here, right? That I created. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll jump a little bit based on that. So let's assume that I've got only 96 plates and I've got 150 names. Yep. Well, what you want to do is you would you would uh, probably the easiest thing to do is to delete the lines, uh, the names that you don't want to work with. Mm -hmm. Right. And then uh, and then or have the customer, you know, put 96 and then call it 96 one and then 96 two. Oh, I see. And then 96 three or something like that. But again, you're, you, uh, uh, just normally what I would typically do um, and it's been a while, but I'm. I'm uh, you would normally delete out whatever you don't want to to have come in, mm -hmm. export that out as the CSV file, and then basically then you know delete the ones that you sent out, and then bring back the ones that you that you deleted originally. Yeah, and, and then it, and then bring it in. That, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, if, if it's easier to just make almost a separate spreadsheet for the ones that won't fit the first time, you know, you just do that, and then you can start again at, at job or name one, and there's no problem, kind of thing on spreadsheet. Yeah, two, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. So again, if, again, if we go back and let's assume that we want to put a cut line here. So again, if I come in here and I go into print merge. Now, let me let me uh, let me sort of kill two birds with one stone here. Um, let me go into the Excel spreadsheet now. And then I'll put a cut box around it because so, this certainly that's the, uh, you know, common 
uh, question that somebody would be asking mm -hmm. um, is this is the format that that Excel needs to be in to be properly processed. OK, so I did one here where this is the the other common one that you're going to get, which is this type, which is right. a no, no. We don't want it done this way. OK, so we don't want Mike, Bob, Jim, Sally. We want all the names in a column. We want all the other values in a column and the next values in a column and so forth. Right. So Not each one in a row, basically. Yes, exactly. And sometimes okay. you'll get customers. Again, you have to give them the, you know, so you have to give them appropriate formatting so they understand what to do. So again, you know, doing a page, you know, a lot of times I'll tell people, you know, you should have a, a formatted file, right? That says, okay, if you're going to give me an Excel spreadsheet, I need to be done this way. I need it to be, you know, formatted this way and, and at least give them some screenshots or whatever. So they understand what you're getting. Cause the last thing you want to do is to have all those names in a row. And then you're spending all this time trying to get it all fixed up and everything like that, because you didn't tell the customer. You know, right. what you're looking at properly. Right, exactly. So you notice here that the first column is is text and number. And this is very important because Corel will always take the first, uh, well, you don't have to, but typically they'll take the text and number as your identifying fields, right? So you remember I created merge fields that were called text and number. Well, again, I need to put those into the Excel spreadsheet. So again, you know, this might be, you know, the first one might not be text. It might be something like position mm -hmm. or whatever, right? But again, you want something in there that's identifiable, okay? So again, you, what you're going to do now is you're going to save as, and you're going to save it as a CSV file, okay? So right here it says CSV comma delimited file. And what that basically means is that the you're going to have Mike comma one and the comma designates the ending of the first name and the whatever comes after the comma is the beginning of the second right name. It's like a, okay, a so, plain text notation of whatever yeah. you've kind of okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And you have to be you have to be careful with this because if you have commas in your name <laughs> and you're using yeah, comma you as your might. delimiter, you can have problems, right? So again, these are things that need to be sort of, you I know, thought okay. about when you're when you're bringing stuff in because you may not use a comma, then you might use something else like a, a dot or or a or a, a you know a tab or something like that. So again, comma is the most common one you're going to see, but again, you can use you know different identifiers if you want. So again, I'm going to use the comma, um, and I'm going to save it, and we're going to call it. Uh, Let's call it, uh, you know, webinar. And again, I'm going to say uh, save. And typically, I, 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 we would always want to close this file down because sometimes in the old days, there used to be a sharing violation. If that file was open, then Corel couldn't import that file if it was open. Sort wow. of, I think it was a kind of a, and like to so stop with somebody tampering with stuff or whatever. So, okay. so I'll see if it works. But um, again, you could you, sometimes, you know, you may have an issue, you know, with an old version of Corel or an old version of, of Excel or something like that, right? So again, if I go back into Corel, now what I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to import a file. Okay. Um, and I'm looking for a CSV file. You'll notice here I can bring three types of formats in. I'm going to bring a CSV file in, and you can see here's my webinar CSV file. So I'm going to double click on that, and you notice that the names automatically pop up. I have position as my header, and I have number as my other header. So again, I, I've basically duplicated. And you notice here, I didn't have any problems with the sharing violation. So again, that, uh, <laughs> that's making me happy. So, um, so again, that's certainly uh, that because that I remember spending I don't know how many hours, you know, kicking the computer and and uh, running yep. around the house with, with what do you the mean rest of my hair out. To, what, well, yeah, you didn't even know. It wouldn't bring it in. You're going, why is this yep. not working? And then you 
and then silly me at three o'clock in the morning. Go, oh yeah, I remember. Oh okay, there, there. Close the Yeah, I had to close the program. I had to close yeah. the file down. But it does looks like that's not a big issue. Now. In tears at our laser, just exactly. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Now, um, just for those that have been around for a while, maybe they used this before. Mm -hmm. We used to be able to bring Excel spreadsheets in natively, but again. Um, I just never, after, I can't remember, it was Corel 14 or 15, you couldn't do it anymore. So, well, it was too hard to do it. So using the CSV file is typically the easiest. Just the easier way to go about it. Yeah, it's the easiest thing to do. So I okay. always just use CSV. And you can see that the formatting is done properly here. Everything's set up properly. I've got my seven names that I had in there. So, you know, it's not like I'm, you know, we're hiding anything. Everything's done properly and, and we're ready to go. Um, oh. Quick question for you, if you don't mind. Yep. Uh, we had a question earlier from Kristen that I wanted to make sure I got back to. It was about yep. um, uh, using Ruby and then, uh, well, as you were showing, like bringing the job in uh, from, you know, Corel into Ruby. Yeah. Um, she was just asking, uh, do you have to stick to the fonts that are available during the, the print merge option? So when you're using print merge there, are you, do you have access to all the fonts that are in Corel? Yeah, again, yeah, the, the print the print merge is really just going to pick up whatever's in Corel. If you bring it into Ruby, then it comes in as a as a data as an object. It, I don't think it comes in as a font anymore. Right. Again, I'd have to check that. It's probably a good question that we should have probably just been looking to see. But um, but again, I still go like because you know in this case I know Corel files will be able to eventually import directly into Ruby, but for the moment, if you're having to save as PDF, you, like you said, you've already sort of rasterized all that that text into an image, so well, not necessarily. I mean, PDFs will carry the font information with them, so well, it depends true. on the on the engine that they're using for the PDF filter. So, right. So, whether it will come in as a as a font, because if you bring a a PDF file in, it will come in and then it will it will display the font, you know, as it was saved as a PDF, mm -hmm. typically, and then allow you to work with it. You can't use the font anywhere else on the computer, but you can use it within the the PDF. That's legally how. It typically has to be done. Yeah. Right. So again, uh, anything that you generate in Corel in terms of a font, when you generate the print merge and it goes over to say job control or it goes over to to uh, to Ruby, uh, that font is carried there. The, um, in the in the question of Ruby, is is it editable? And it may not be because of the the issue with this font sh uh, sharing and things like that at Windows. Um, but again, um, if the font value is on the computer, then it may, it may work, so, you know, in Corel, if you don't have the font, it'll substitute the font. Um, yeah. You know, so whatever again, it chooses is the, yeah, whatever it chooses is going to be the way. Really quickly, uh, another quick question from, uh, the outlaw who was asking if there was a max number of lines you can import. No, I, I, I think I, I, if, um, if you go, um, uh, let's see here. If we go to uh, my website, um, just a quick thanks again to everybody for watching today. I know we're coming to uh, the top of the hour here, but uh, we're happy to take some questions still. And yeah, uh, we'll still just keep on going. We'll finish this off. So exactly, it's just done properly. So if I go in here and I type in um, print merge. And this is sublimation.ca, right? This is Yeah, or engra you can use engrave.ca. It should go to the same one. Yeah, so this guy had 20 lines per plate. Right? So you can see, you know, it name one name. So what he was doing was he doing he was doing a big um, he was doing a big uh, memorial uh, install where you know he had he, I he, I can't remember I, he had something like five thousand names or something like wow. that and he had like twenty lines per 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 plate so you can see that you know it was name one two three four right so again you know they 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 what they had to do is they had twenty columns and then they put they evenly put the amount of names in each one of the columns. Now, if you got to the, you know, to the last, to, to the last column, you might've only, or the last row, you might've maybe, maybe just maybe three or four of them had a name in it, the rest of them had a blank, but that right. doesn't make a big difference. You may just, just remember if there's a blank there, you may have to re-space a little bit, 
right? Because you're going to have a blank will show up. But anyways, this was 20 lines per, per plate. So again, you know, these two files, I think I actually did a, a, a file on this on my YouTube channel too. Um, but again, this is a static. So again, if you want to, if you want to sort of, you know, go through this again, it's relatively old. It's, you know, it was done a fair long time ago, but it's a step-by-step -step type. You can see how the, everything was formatted uh, for name one, name two and things. And you can see that there was a fair bit of, can you imagine having to type this up? Yeah. <laughs> like you'd, I mean, you know, I, I'd be going off to the silly wagon after like about the fourth name. <laughs> I mean, look at this, Aitner and Alictio, and I can't even pronounce them. You know, look, look at this, Mr. and Mrs. Eduardo. I mean, like this is just a nightmare. Well, it's right? just trying yeah, it's to like, type, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, and one one letter off, I mean, like everybody is going to recognize if their name is spelled incorrectly. Oh, exactly. Like, immediately. Can you, <laughs> can you imagine putting this up in a hospital or wherever it was going? Oh, my gosh. As a donor wall or something <laughs> like that. And it just it would just be a nightmare. You know, it's so that's why I say, I mean, like, like, oh my gosh, I hadn't even it, thought of that. No, oh I mean, like, you can imagine putting it up there and then having to go back and start replacing plates and everything. Like, yeah. forget. And if you laser engrave directly on the wood, well, guess oh. what? The wood's in the garbage and you got to start all over again, right? Yeah. So it really becomes something, uh, you know, that a lot of people really want to be able to, to have that, this functionality where they can bring this stuff in. So, again, we're going to go finish. So again, we're going to do our insert. I'll get this out of the way here, Put it over here. So I'm going to go insert field, and then I'm going to say number. Now, just as a silly, if you wanted to have, you know, the position show up twice in the same plate, I could bring, I could say position and insert again. So I'd have two positions. So again, you might have you know, whatever position is twice on the plate. Some, you know, I, I, I'm just throwing that out there that that could happen, right? So anyway, so we want this to be center justified. Center justified. And then again, these have to go, you know, at 1.5. And I'm not going to worry about doing any formatting. And again, if we want to bring a logo in, we can do that. Let's go grab this logo here. And if I want to drop a logo in there, you know, again, we could do something like this, put that there. And again, this might be why, you know, again, you know, maybe now this, this needs to be, you know, over here. It doesn't look like it's evenly spaced out. That's weird. Okay, so basically now you could have something like this. So again, you have to be careful. You know, you could make this left justified, but if we want it center justified, then you got to make sure that you're not, you know, you 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 now your your characters have to fall within that area, mm -hmm. right? So again, you might say, well, okay, well I can get ten of them in there. So you might, you know, type in whatever whatever it is that that fits in there to make sure that you tell the customer and say, well, okay, well. You know, let's move this down to, say, 16 point and go, you know. And again, you have to be careful because I's are going to be treated differently than a than a W or something like that. So, again, you, you have to be, you don't want to sort of push it to the limit with a bunch of I's because if everybody gives you W's and M's, you're going to be, you know, you're, you're, you're going to be different because your, your, your font is going to be different size depending on which font, which character you're using. Yep. Right. So, again, you might do something and then see what fits within that area there okay now if you want to put a, uh, a cut line in there now you can do that uh just remember that if i put a rectangle in here for cutting um you can put this this red This hairline, don't have the default set up. Now, um, you have to be careful here because you, uh, if you're printing without, without um, um, your, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank. That's okay. First time for everything. Sorry. Yes. 
So basically, you're, yeah, first time, it's probably more. Than, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll go back to it when I, when I go into the print. print anyway. Anyways, no we don't normally want to make this three inches. Um, um, basically, we want to make this a little bit smaller because Corel some, won't output sometimes to the edge of the, when we're, when we're going out to a printer. Um, I do notice that the PDF seem to be all right. So um, let's, uh, I normally make this 2.995. Uh, and then this point nine nine five. Oops. And then uh, again, so that's a little bit smaller than the edge because Corel typically wouldn't wouldn't process anything out at the edge of the page size mm -hmm. within five thou of the edge. Um, nobody's going to notice this, but again, we want to make sure that this gets processed and get rid of that box there. And then we're gonna we're gonna do a now you could merge to a new document if you want, or you could just perform the print merge, which then doesn't do the merging of the new document. So if I say perform print merge, it just takes me right into the right into the into the merging of the of the um, instead of creating the document, then I got to go up and say imposition command, blah 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 blah. So uh, again, if I go into the Trotec driver. And then I select this, minimize the job size. I can't believe I forgot about that. Anyways, <laughs> minimize. I don't want to do minimize the job size. So again, I'm going to put in something here that's again my page size. You know, to be 12 by 24, could be 12 by 12, six by six, whatever, whatever size so your of your master, master, master plate. Page. Yeah, your of your master page. Yeah, exactly. your material maybe or whatever the exactly. And then with the with the uh, imposition command. Now, I can't use Mike because Mike only had six names in there. Uh, but if you want to see sort of what I was talking about, I would I could select Mike and then it automatically did the six. Now, I've got seven names there, so I I missed the one name. Um, but again, by having the imposition command saved, it makes my next time I use the same setup a lot quicker. Because now I'm not having to worry about going in and, and, and making that change. Right. So again, if I if I go back out to here and I put in one more row, then I get the KKK in there. And again, you have to remember here that right now, if I go this route, I have no way of making any changes to this file. Like I can't go in and fix this KKKK, right? Because this is going over to the printer. So if this is going to job control, I'm I'm dead, right? So in this case here, I have to go out, and then I have to perform the 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 uh, merge to new document, and then I have to go to page seven, then I have to do my manipulation here, and then. And then basically, uh, I didn't have a number there for that one. But you can see what happens. Again, you get a blank field if there's nothing there. Now, if I go in and if I do my imposition command. It'll bring in that set seventh. Uh, yeah, now now the K and everything has been condensed properly, right? So again, if I go in and, and uh, do my print. And I come down to my layout from my imposition command. I select my, whoops. I'm not saddle stitching. Go to Mike, and then I can go to Edit, and then I can dr just drop in that one last column or row there, uh, and then you can see this. Now again, you know, if I if I if I want to put this up at the top, I could say margins, and then put this up at the top. If I want, this is normally how I do it, and and then I can send the job over. Just remember that if the cuts go over. Now the the cuts are going to work as a as a as a box, and again, this is really not something that's the most conducive way to cutting plastic, because now you're getting a bunch of lines that are going to sort of go over top of each overlap, other. Overlap, yeah, overlap. So normally, you know, if I'm doing a 12 by 24, and I'm doing it, let's say I'm doing it on 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 flexi brass, because I'm going to do a bunch of plates for 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 a tro for a bunch of trophies or whatever, mm -hmm. or I'm going to do name badges or something. I would normally do all the engraving as one job, and then I would send over the cut lines as a as a second as job, a separate as yeah. a separate job. That's normally what I would have to do if I'm running it out of Corel Draw. Makes sense. Okay. So again, all I need to do now is just go file print, 
and the jobs over in, in job control. Uh, if I wanted to, um, what you could do, uh, let's just put this back to the middle. I want to take this over to Ruby. Then what you could do is come back to general. Now I'm going to go to Microsoft, print the PDF, right? And then I'm going to go file print. And then I'm going to call it, uh, let's call it um, test. And then if I go to Ruby, then I can go back. I can load the job in. And then what I can do is I can come over uh, here. And there's a job there. Now, again, you could go into Ruby then and say, if there's any overlapping lines, then Ruby will will automatically discard the overlapping lines, and then those lines will just be straight lines. So again, you can do this in Ruby. You can get away with it in, in, in Ruby here and then process it that way. And right. I found that when I created the PDF in Ruby, I could have just done a one by three box. I didn't have to make it 2.995. I was able to do it as a as a three by one and, and, and get away with it. Makes sense. Okay, but but again, you can see that now, If again, if we select the, if I come in here and I go, um, let's go here. And then I think the black is, yeah, it doesn't look like anything in here is, yeah, see, again, these are all complex objects. So none of the font information came over with it, right. right? So again, you know, you can't bring the text in here and then somehow then go ahead and then redo it, right? I don't know why you'd want to redo it, but again, you know, you, you know, again, maybe, maybe you notice at the last minute that something's wrong. Yeah. So what you'd have to do then is delete Mike and then retype something in and then you hopefully match it up. One of the eyes and Tina. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the I and Tina and everything I, like that. I, uh, so I was going to ask, so we're, um, we're coming to the end here. I wanted to, I have one or two uh, questions for you from the chat here, Mike, really quick. But um, I wanted to mention too that again, uh, I think direct import of Corel files is certainly on the roadmap for this year for Ruby or for the upcoming, you know, 12 months. But uh, for the moment, what Mike's showing you there about saving to PEF or PDF, PEF, um, PDF is, is, you know, by and large, the easiest way to bring something over. Um, with that in mind, though, I did want to. Ask well, just you remember, what... though, is that is that the print merge um, doesn't save a Corel file. Oh, right. right. That's right. So you the... even if you had the direct import, you're, you're not going to be able to do it. Right. So, well, I, you yeah, you, you could take That's these easy. and then you could, yeah, I mean, you could take these and then and then duplicate the, or put it in 12 by 24 and then send it over. But uh, to the imposition command is quite simple for doing what I need to do. So for me, the PDF is, might be the better way. It might so, be an interesting um, topic to bring up with the developers of, of Ruby yep. to ask about, you know, bringing a, a print merge um, capability into the tools in Ruby. But I think that would maybe yeah. be quite an ask. <laughs> yeah, um, no, exactly. Yeah. I had a question for you, Mike, though, that uh, so Lev and I were, were sort of uh, communicating with Matt here in the um, in the, the chat, but I think, you know, we'd like to get your feedback on it, too. So Matt originally asked, he says, what program would you guys recommend for sending clients proofs and easy to stroke to path and laser file preparation? Looking to get faster at my workflow. Uh, he says right now he's using Inkscape uh, and generating PDFs and sending them to Ruby, but um, he feels like he's getting a lot of um you know converting text to paths and merging the paths and sending to laser it's a lot of repetitive clicks right yeah so he does all the modifications and resends a picture for each version of the proof and then um you know he'll hear back from the client by you know by email kind of thing but uh then he's having to basically like remake the the pdf again send it back and like you know convert text send it back into ruby etc cetera, etc cetera, et cetera. so he's curious you know if there's a if there's something, because right now he's using Inkscape, so he's curious if maybe Corel or Illustrator or, you know, other programs might have a way to sort of streamline the process of both, you know, sending proofs. And and Kristen had a good suggestion. Kristen just uses the snippet tool, basically like the, 
the uh, the screen capture tool, right, to send a quick proof. Uh, yeah. And I think Matt says he just exports a quick PNG, but, um, you know, I think hopefully, Matt, some of that too is going to be as Ruby gets to be a, a more streamlined tool and can just import your Inkscape files or Corel files, or Illustrator files directly. Uh, you know, you won't have to do quite so many clicks, but at the same time, you know, I'm curious, you know, Mike, what you would uh, what you would recommend or, or, you know, when you were doing that work also yourself. Well, I mean, the, the one nice thing about Ruby is, I mean, if you had if you had a client that was you were that was you were doing a lot of work for, you could actually give give them user rights and let them do the artwork, and then oh, let true. them or just even send like, over the job yeah, to you and mark up your job right in Ruby if they want. Exactly. Any yep. corrections or changes? Yep. They, that's a good yeah, point. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. again, you you just want to make sure that you natively type in the text and everything, so that if they need to make a change to the text or, you know, in terms of the spelling or the, or whatever that it can be done, the sizing isn't too big of a deal, but, right. but certainly the, you know, you could do something like that. Right. So, um, I mean, I think Inkscape's getting a little bit old and the, you know, I don't, I haven't really seen a new version again. Like I haven't been following it as much as I probably should checking in. Um, but, um, I don't see a lot of people using Inkscape per se, anymore and, and like you said i mean if it, it, i would always try to do everything i can you know in ruby as opposed to trying to do it in inkscape and importing it in i mean there's certainly you know as you can see you know there's things that need to be done in corel or or illustrator or inkscape that you know right now can't be done in in ruby and there, therefore you then need to generate them there and then and then bring that 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 information in uh that way but again if you can do it in ruby you know, then, then, yeah, then generate a PDF and then send it to the customer for confirmation or do a screen capture or whatever. Um, but again, the, you know, the nice thing about Ruby, you know, is that if, if the customer is doing the artwork as it is with the text, you know, it's their dime if something goes wrong. Right. Right. So if the spelling's wrong in a, in a print, in a, in, in a text scenario like this, you know, they made the boo-boo. You know, you're going to, you might save them. You might say, oh, don't worry about it, Jim. I'm going to save you. But you look like the hero, not the zero. Right. Right. So again, you know, that's why it's always important that you, you know, again, that, that we, the customer gets the final say, you know, in the process. Uh, and if we put everything on his, his say, then if there are any problems, then, you know, we have a, a, a comeback to get out of it. Yeah. I think or that's you can... Ultimate. At least you can charge for the rework if you have to run. Yeah, it. Yeah, no, you can charge it, or again, you might do it for free because you know it's not really a big deal, right? And and then therefore, you know, you you look like the hero. Yeah. Right. So again, because you know you fixed it up quick and you got it done, and they were happy, and they're not at you because you did this, you did the wrong spelling and everything mm -hmm. like that. Absolutely. Right? So again, so that's why it's very important that way that that this technique is certainly used by his, you know, when you're having to deal with a lot of text. I would so. say, Matt, uh, he asked if the, the plan is to ever, so to make Ruby a fully functional graphic design program. Not quite. I, I do think they want to make it as robust as possible, but, um, you know, we're never going to be able to catch up, obviously, to Adobe or, or Photoshop or, or, pardon me, Adobe Photoshop, uh, Adobe or Corel or any of those. But I think they want to put as much of the basic functionality in there as possible. Um, in order that you can do as much of the the work in Ruby um, as possible in order that you can, as Mike is saying, uh, do edits and things like that on the fly. Um, particularly, like I said, for things like typos, spelling mistakes, uh, you know, lines that, that overlap and, and crisscross when you're doing cut lines, stuff like that. Think of it as a, a design program or a very simple design program designed sort of to make um, laser processing as easy and as as uh, efficient as possible, not to make the design process as, as efficient and uh, strong as possible. Yeah, because know you know, things like array functions and nesting and and uh, cutter offsets and curf and all that sort of stuff. Yep. I mean, you know, I would rather have those and then and then still deal with Illustrator, Corel, or Inkscape to do right. my standard drawing, than to have them put all the resources to do something that that can be easily done in, in one of those programs. So, well, and I, you know. I think it, it just goes to show like, uh, and it's funny, I mean, we, I, I really like Ruby personally. I was slow to warm up to it, but I'm really coming around to it. And I think uh, there are a few things that, you know, we were, I should say the, the, the team of developers who are working on in particular are trying to listen really carefully to the feedback that we get. 
um, and really judging sort of the roadmap for future implementations and upgrades and stuff based on the feedback we're getting from customers, which is why we have like a, a fully integrated sort of 3D rotary, you know, um, sort of imaging tool you can see in a previous uh, webinar we did with Miguel about Ruby. There's a sort of like a 3D tool inside of Ruby for rotary engraving before we had multi-line text. You know what I mean? It's just like the way that it's being developed is purely by what do our customers use the most and you know, when it came to things like, to Mike's point, when it came to things like multi-line text, when it came to things that were so easily done in a design program, I think they sort of said like, well, you know, chances are they'll just do this quickly in Photoshop or whatever, right? But if it's just a tag that doesn't need multi-line text, it just needs, you know, text block here, text block here, text block here, and then, you know, away you go, um, you know, Ruby's ideal. Um, I think that will about do it for today. I had one last question, uh, Mike. I don't know if you know this off the top of your head, but I did want to come back to it because I saw it come in. I don't want to leave anybody by the wayside here. Uh, a quick question we had based on, uh, here it is, XY. I'm thinking of getting a Trotec, and they're curious about the fastest engraving speed the lasers can do, you know, realistically, and, you know, with keeping quality in mind, uh, you know, millimeters per second kind of thing. Um, so, you know. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're 140 inches a second, which uh, I'm trying to remember what that is, 3.2 I I can gotcha. meters per second or whatever whatever it is 140 uh sorry what was it again? 140 inches a second if we're looking at the 300 or the or the 360 it's, um, it's about 3500 millimeters a second yeah for what it, for so, it's worth. yeah <laughs> yeah so 3.5 meters i think per second if i remember yep. correctly but anyways yeah i mean the 100 is going to be a little bit slower 110 and i believe the 400 is going to be a bit bigger um i certainly that 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 speed will be dictated to a certain degree on how long your travel is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you um, just as a quick side note, I mean, if you bring in a, a job, right. And I put this up in the top left-hand corner and I say update, let's just see what, let's go to a hundred speed. So the, you know, you're going to do this photo in two minutes uh, um, for there. Now, if you duplicate this, and but the thing, the problem with here is I'm never at maximum speed mm -hmm. because as I'm speeding up, I have to start slowing down. So I never really get to maximum speed. But if I duplicate this, so I'm two minutes for one. If I do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, can I? Yeah, well, 20, yeah, I can get one more in there. So now I've got 11, right? Yeah. So if I take this and I take this and I update this. So now I've gone from two minutes for one down to five and a half minutes for 11. So now I'm down at, uh, you know, basically now 30 seconds per image. Mm -hmm. You know, now this is kind of a, but this is gives you a good idea as to when you have that full travel, how much faster the yes. job can go. And this is why machine, one reason is why machines are wider than they are deep, you know, for this basic reason as yeah. they, they, is they, 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 they get faster. So your speed sometimes to a certain degree also is relative based on your travel. So, you know, if you're, if you're, you, you're not going to get 140 inches a second on a, on a rotary attachment but you will get 140 inches a second if you're getting something that's five or six inches yep. long, right? So again, you know, it, it, you know, some of that, you know, um, you know, works into your calculations. And like I said, the machines are, you know, their speeds are, are relative, you know, some are a little bit faster than the others. Uh, we get into the big machines and the speed slows down even more yep. because they're more cutting machines than they are engraving. They do engraving, but they're, speeds aren't aren't as much and i and you know that's really one thing where the trotec really shines is the fact that because of the ceramic core laser and the ability of it to to fire as fast as it can and create a very good dot it can move at those speeds and give you that good quality yep. now you know i mean if you're into a really fine line you may need to slow down a little bit on the fine lines but but ultimately your travel is really going to be um you know very very fast and the quality will be able to keep up to it so I think that's that's perfect, Mike. I, I really appreciate it. I mean, um, a huge thank you to Mike, obviously. Uh, if this is something that you guys want to see more of, I hope you'll let us know. You can always 
post in the comments underneath this video. It's going to be on our YouTube channel starting uh, basically right from when we finish the broadcast here. I think, um, you know, if you want to me- reach out to us on social media, any of those platforms, Twitter, Facebook, you know, we're always there. Um, more importantly, maybe even is uh, if you're in uh, Ontario or in the Maritimes in Canada and you'd like to reach out to Mike to get some more information about lasers, maybe see a demo with Mike. Uh, I mean, lucky you. Uh, you can always reach him at mike.clark at showtechlaser.com. Yeah, oh my goodness. Uh, you can see it there <laughs> on the screen. Yeah, uh, these uh, <laughs> these streams, man. <laughs> there are a lot of uh, mental overhead. You got uh, it. But uh, again, you know, Huge thank you to you guys for uh, for joining us today. I hope um, if there's a technique you would like to see demoed, I mean, definitely reach out to us. Let us know. Um, this year, we've made a real point of trying to show you as many of the things that we get requested as possible. Things like uh, photo engraving, you know, Ruby tutorials, stuff like that. So please keep the suggestions coming. Uh, you can always reach out to us directly. YouTube at trotechlaser.ca. Uh, that one is .ca. Um, and, uh, you know, again, Mike.Clark at trotechlaser.com. We always love to hear from you guys. With an E. Um, Clark with an E. Clark with an E. <laughs> yeah. Tina with two eyes. Oh, Don, just yes, before sir. you before we hang up here, I just opened up. I did save the uh, the input uh, into a text file. So if okay. you really want to see what it uh, it looks like. Oh, there it this is. This is that you could actually, if you wanted to do this and in, in, if you wanted to do the typing in, in Notepad, then this is the way it needs to be formatted. So you can see that the two indicates two columns, and then there's there's two uh, header fields, text and numbers, and then you've got a e- number equals that for formatting, and then they and then below that's Mike, and then that's and then zero because it's incrementing Bob one. But you can see the slashes in there, the way you would format it in a text file. If I if I went into um, if I went into the uh, art the the uh, CSV. And I opened this up. Uh, let's see if I can open this up in uh, WordPad. I think with WordPad, yeah, you would yep. be able to. There so you is. can see you've got text, comma, number, and then you get a carriage return. So carriage return means that we're looking at the next set of lines. So that ends the input, right? So Mike, comma. So the comma indicates that you know the, the E is the ending, and then then the zero is the beginning of the next uh, insert field, right? So Mike zero, and then then and then there's a carriage return and we come back down to bob so again you could if you wanted to you don't even have to be in excel you could if you were in word you could just go you could type it up this way if somebody was really fast at typing then they could just put in mike clark comma and then uh, sales rep right yeah. and then go to the next one and then you know and then uh, tech you know you might have name for the first field and position for the instead of number you could have position right so mike clark and then comma sales rep and then the next one would be Don Connell, marketing. Yeah. And then uh, Lev Uslander, Slack. Slack, I mean, uh, president. <laughs> <laughs> Chief general. Chief Slack. general, yes, exactly. <laughs> Commandant. <laughs> uh, exactly. I think, uh, I think um, <laughs> he is. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. Sometimes I, I think like I complain about Photoshop or Illustrator being a pain in the neck. And then I remember that like, oh, yeah, we're very spoiled by software programs now <laughs> and how easy they make things. Yes. Um, OK, I think that is going to do it for this week. A huge thank you once again. To, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> huge thank you again to Lev and Mike. Uh, and uh, we will see you guys again next week on Friday. Same laser time, same laser channel. There's Lev. Bye, guys. Bye.